You ready for one that is quintic? How many solutions are we looking for? Five. Let's go ahead and start listing everything we know. I know one of the solutions already, and so do you. Mm, don't think too hard. Don't be like, I don't see it. Yeah, you do. Is there a GCF? Yeah, there is. So what we're going to do is take the original function, set it equal to zero. And when we do, we could say, well, let's just factor an x out. And that gives me x to the fourth minus 4x cubed minus 39x squared plus 100x plus 350 equals zero. And now we're left with this big bad quartic. Quartic, there, I had the pen in there. It looked like I had extra digits. So quartic, but I do know that x equals zero. So from the very beginning, I have one of my five solutions. Partial credit, there it is. Let's find the other ones that I can find for sure with a graph. Going to the graph now. There it is. All right, we have uh, negative five. Negative 2.243, oh, zero. No surprises there, told you. Positive five and 6.243. Okay, I've said this before, um, but I'll, I think it's worth repeating. Anytime you have an imaginary solution or a, an irrational solution like square root of five or whatever, they're gonna come in pairs. So we're gonna have like plus or minus five i, plus or minus square root of five, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I think I've said it before, but it's worth saying. But I do know this, negative five, positive five, and the zero that I've already found. So let's go back and let's go ahead and keep listing everything that I know. Zero and plus or minus five. So here's our next best guess to find the last two, which we're showing up on the graph, but we don't know them in simplest radical form. So our next best guess is to divide out, using purple, of course, the five and the negative five from the polynomial that remains. So I don't need the x anymore. This is not a situation where I'm continuing to factor, where I'm like, you better keep that x around. But what I am going to do is divide five into doo -doo 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 -doo. one x to the fourth, negative four x cubed, negative 39 x squared, 100 x and 350. And let's just jump to the fact that we know this is zero, right? And then when we're done, we're going to have this thing here with the four numbers and we're going to say, what does that mean? Well, that means that we're not done because we're going to have to divide a negative five out of the next. So we're going to put a negative five and keep going. All right. One, five, one, five. I'm sensing a pattern. Uh, negative 34, uh, 150, 170. Yeah. Negative 170. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, negative 70, and then, ooh, negative 350. Lucky us, it works. It better work. I always say that like it's a thread every time. It better work. <laughs> you better do it. Negative 5. <laughs> Felt like Batman. A very non-threatening Batman wearing a school shirt. <laughs> and all the criminals run away. There's going to be a 70 here. Just going to call it. Um, divide out the negative 5 next. It doesn't matter if you do the negative 5, then the 5, or the other order. Negative five times one is negative those. You get negative four. Multiply those, you're gonna get 20. Multiply those, you get 70. Yeah, yeah. All right, we now have a quadratic. <laughs> Quad means four, but it has an exponent of two and I held up three fingers. Okay, it's quadratic. The highest exponent you'll have is a two. It is a trinomial and it is uh, gonna have these three terms. So yeah, <laughs> all right. 1x squared, I don't know why I wrote the 1, minus 4x minus 14, and we are going to use the quadratic formula on that. Permission not to write negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all, plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. <laughs> I said it so fast, I was like, oh, did I say it right? Negative b, opposite of that, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a is 1, c, negative 14, I'll divide it by 2a. All right, again, we know we're not going to get an imaginary number. We are going to get something irrational. So 4 plus or minus the square root of whatever's in there in the number 2. So uh, 16 uh, minus 4 times 14. So plus 4 times 14. 4 times 14 is a number. It is 40, 16, 56. So that's gonna give me 72. All right, square root of 72. Ooh, a fun one, fun one. You can ignore that. Um, <laughs> square root of 72. So let's pause for a second. 
and then proceed by finding the square root of 72 over on the side or in your head or wherever. And what I've said up to this point is, let's find two numbers that multiply to give me 72. One of them better be a perfect square. And most people are going to say this, and they're not wrong. Write it if you want or not. They would say 9 times 8, and they're not wrong. And then they'd be like, that's 3 squared 9 is 3. And the square root of 8, I'm done. Ah, no, you're not done. That actually gets simpler, and here's how. 8 is 4 times 2. There's still a square root that's buried, a perfect square that's buried in there. We're going to have to get him out. So 3 times 2 times the square root of 2, which would be 6 square root of 2. Now, shortcut. Not much of a shortcut, but you just got to think of the largest perfect square that goes into it. So I'm going to do it again over here. 72 is 36 times 2. Not obvious. Most people don't think like that, and that's fine. 6 squared to 2. Much faster. Just think about the biggest perfect square. So we're still dealing with this. We have 4 plus or minus 6 squared to 2 over 2. I'm ready to divide every term by 2. And when I do, I'll switch colors again. 2 goes into itself one time. 2 goes into that twice. So that 3 squared to 2 times. It's going to give me 2 plus or minus 3 squared to 2 over 1. And those are my last two answers. 2 plus or minus 3 squared of 2. Let's write them in green over here. 2 plus or minus 3 squared of 2. So I have my five answers now.